In this video, we're going to be looking at gifts made in contemplation of death. And at the end of the previous video, we said that there are some circumstances in which equity will allow the transfer of legal title to occur, even though the formality requirements have not been complied with. And there are five specific circumstances, and we've looked at one, which is the conveyance of land to a minor. And in this video, we're going to look at a second circumstance where equity will step in, and that is gifts made in contemplation of death. Okay, so donationis mortis causa, where the donor makes a gift conditional upon and in contemplation of death, then title will pass upon the death of the donor. Okay, so this category frequently confuses students, and it is far more limited than it might otherwise seem. The doctrine arose specifically to create an exception to the rule that a testamentary gift must be made properly or else it will not be effective. Okay, So the courts will uphold deathbed gifts. The gifts are gifts made during the donor's lifetime made in expectation of immediate death and which are intended to take effect on the donor's death. And there are three requirements as laid down by Lord Russell in Kane and Moon from 1896. And we're going to look at each of these three requirements now. So the first requirement for um, to make a gift made in contemplation of death is that the donor must be contemplating the real possibility of his death. Okay, This may be because of illness, going on active service or a hazardous trip. The mere reflection that we all die does not suffice to make a donationis mortis causa, nor does a gift conditional on death automatically become a donatio mortis causa. Death must be either immediate or a real possibility. So in other words, the doctrine only ordinarily operates in cases of people acting in extremis, okay? For example, donatio mortis causa would cover a situation like that of a soldier lying down on a battlefield, okay? His head supported by a comrade as his life ebbs away, who then gasps, I don't know, I want my Chelsea Football Club shares to be given to my second son, okay? This statement would not be sufficient to make an ordinary transfer of shares because the formality of register, registering them under the Companies Act 2006 would not have been complied with. However, the doctrine of donatio mortis causa provides that such a gift will be enforceable because it was made in expectation of death in circumstances in which it would not have been reasonable to expect the purported donor to comply with the formalities for making a valid gift of the shares. In other words, this doctrine can be seen as an exception to the rule that equity will not assist a volunteer to perfect an imperfect gift. Okay? And also, just as a side case from Thompson and Mitchin, it says that in terms of a hazardous trip, the risks of air travel is not sufficient for, um, for, for making a gift in contemplation of death. Okay? So the risk of air travel is not sufficient enough risk or hazard. Okay, so the second requirement is the gift or title to or means to obtain the gift must be physically delivered to the donee. This may be the chattel itself or something like a bank book, a check or title deed. A gift should be distinguished from a bailment to place the goods in safekeeping. In other words, simply to look after the goods. So it is important that the donor intends to give up dominion to the property. So in other words, not just safekeeping to look after for you at the time of making his donatio mortis causa. And that's from Wilkes and Allington in 1931. Thus, the donor must not intend to be able to deal with the property after the purported gift and must intend, in effect, to give up her rights to the property at that time time. Okay, and the third requirement is that the gift should be conditional upon death and does not take effect if the donor recovers or survives. So this is very simply means that if the person survives the gift, so if the person survives, the gift will fail and they can reclaim that property back. 
Okay, so very simply, those are the three requirements as laid down in the case of Cain and Moon in 1896. A donatio mortis causa will prevail over any testamentary disposition of the subject matter. So let's say a car was to be given to Harry under a dying man's will. This dis disposition can technically be overturned and a donatio mortis causa may prevail over that disposition such that his dying wish to give that car to Stephen will prevail. Okay, and also land may be the subject of a donatio mortis causa. It may prevail over the requirements so that the transfer of land must be in writing. So until 1991, it was thought that land could not be subject to a donatio mortis causa until the following case occurred. Okay, and this is the case of Sen and Heatley in 1991. Okay, so the donor who was terminally ill made an oral declaration to his former partner that his house and its contents would belong to her when he died. He gave her keys um, to a steel box containing the title deeds of the house. The Court of Appeal held the elements necessary for a donatio mortis causa had been present and that the gift of the house was valid. However, there had been no delivery of the contents and they were not claimed in the case. <clears throat> so... In this case, the Court of Appeal dealt with a couple who had lived together for 10 years, but who had separated more than 25 years before the man's death. He died of a terminal illness, but before death, told his former, pup, told, told his former partner, who was the claimant, that the house with unregistered title was hers, and that you have the keys, the deeds are in a steel box. While it was argued against the claimant that she had always had the keys to the house, such, the, such that the lifetime gift could have no further effect by way of gift, the claimant was successful in establishing her claim to the house because title deeds were essential in establishing title to unregistered land. There was no retention of dominion in this case because the deceased had not expected that he would return to the house nor that he would have been able to deal with it in any way before his death. Okay. And we've also got these two cases here. It's Valley and Birch with 2013 and King and Dubry in 2014. In these cases, title deeds to property were handed over with words to the effect, I want you to have my house when I go. In both cases, the High Court found a valid donatio mortis causa. So in both these cases, the High Court upheld the rule found in Sen and Headley that land could be subject to a donatio mortis causa. In both cases, valid title deeds were handed over to the respective family members, thus upholding the imposition of a donatio mortis causa. However, on appeal, Valley and Birch was disapproved and the appeal in King and Dubry was allowed. Okay. So in neither case was the donor acting in contemplation of their death in the way required. <clears throat> there was no fatal illness, operation or hazardous expedition. <clears throat> so although the court accepted that land could be transferred using the donatio mortis causa rule, the land here wasn't transferred as it had not fulfilled the requirements of this rule, namely that the donor was not acting in contemplation of their death in the way that was required. In King, um, the court noted that there was no reason why the donor couldn't just change his will. His circumstances did not prevent him from doing this. And also note that in all, the, all three of these cases, so Valley, King and in Sen and Hadley, where land was transferred as a deathbed gift, it concerned unregistered land, okay? So there is a big distinction, as you should potentially remember from you know, last year, with your land law courses, and, my, and if you've seen my videos, you should remember from them, that there's a big distinction between proof of title for registered and unregistered land, okay? So with registered land, the land is registered on the land registry and anyone can view the particular documents associated with that land. With unregistered land, however, 
it will be the title deeds that show ownership. If one was to lose the deed, they would struggle to sell the house. So in these cases of unregistered land, the process of handing over the title deeds on their deathbed was a clear surrender of dominion. However, it would seem if your land is registered, then it would not be possible to make an effective donatio um, mortis causa of that land because of the added formalities associated with registering and proving ownership of that land. Okay. And <clears throat> finally, what if the donor dies from some other cause? Okay. So if a person is contemplating his death from one cause, and actually survives the contemplated cause but dies from another unexpected cause, does the donatio do mortis causa take effect? And in short, the answer is yes, it does. Okay, and this case here, Richards, this case confirmed, they considered this very issue and confirmed that it does. And in Wilkes and Allington, there was a passage from this case from Lord Tomlin, which says it is said in a passage in Williams that the gift must be conditioned to take effect only upon the death of the donor by his existing disorder. No authority has been cited to me for that particular proposition. In fact, the testator did not die by the actual disorder from which he was suffering at the time when he handed over the deed because he died from pneumonia, which supervened upon a chill. If a man in contemplation of death within the meaning of the phrase, as used by Lord Russell in fight, dies from some cause other than the, the disorder which was present to his mind when he made the gift, I have a difficulty in seeing why the gift is not operative. So the donor was suffering from an incurable disease and made a gift in the knowledge that he had not long to live. As things turned out, he had an even shorter time than he imagined, for he died two months later of pneumonia. And it was held that the gift remained valid. Okay, so that is the end of this video about gifts made in contemplation of death. And in the next three videos, I'll be doing, I'll be covering the other three circumstances in which equity would allow the transfer of legal title to occur even though the formality requirements have not been complied with. So the next video will be on the every effort rule okay if you have any questions about this video please leave a comment below and i'll get straight back to you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this a like thank you very much for watching